Well, good Sunday morning. Good Sunday morning. It is Reformation Day. Uh, Reformation Sunday. It's uh, August the 25th. I mean, August. October 25th. Good morning. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome back to Coffee in the Word. But this morning, it's iced tea in the Word. It's all good, though. Oh, hope and pray you're all doing well this morning. I'm uh, going to be getting everybody up. We're going to get ready to go to church here in just a little bit. Uh, but I wanted to get this going. So grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. The psalmody this morning is uh, Psalm 93. So here we go. The Lord reigns. He is robed in majesty. The Lord is robed. He has put on strength as his belt. Yes, the world is established. It, it shall never be moved. Your throne is established from of old. You are from everlasting. The floods have lifted up, O Lord. The floods have lifted up their voice. The floods lifted up their roaring. Mightier than the thunders of many waters. Mightier than the waves of the sea. The Lord on high is mighty. Your decrees are very trustworthy. Holiness befits your house, O Lord, forevermore. Amen. Oh, let's see the Old Testament lesson this morning. We're in Deuteronomy chapter 27, verses 1 through 26. So here we go. Now Moses and the elders of Israel commanded the people, saying, Keep the whole commandment that I command you today, and on the day you cross over the Jordan to the land that the Lord your God is giving you, you shall set, set up large stones and plaster them with plaster. And you shall write on them all the words of this law when you cross over to enter the land that the Lord your God is giving you, a land flowing with milk and honey, as the Lord, the God of your fathers, has promised you. And when you have crossed over the Jordan, you shall set up these stones, concerning which I command you today, on Mount Ebal, and you shall plaster them with plaster, and there you shall build an altar to the Lord your God, an altar of stones." You shall wield no iron tools on them. You shall build an altar to the Lord your God of uncut stones, and you shall offer burnt offerings on it to the Lord your God. <sighs> Excuse me. And you shall sacrifice peace offerings, and shall eat there, and you shall rejoice before the Lord your God, and you shall write on the stones all the words of this law very plainly. Then Moses and the Levitical priests said to all Israel, Keep silence and hear, O Israel. This day you have become the people of the Lord your God. You shall therefore obey the voice of the Lord your God, keeping his commandments and his statutes, which I command you today. That day Moses charged the people, saying, When you have crossed over the Jordan, these shall stand on Mount Gerizim to bless the people, Simeon, Levi, Judah, Issachar, Joseph, and Benjamin. And these shall stand on Mount Ebal for the curse, Reuben, Gad, Asher, Zebulun, Dan, and Naphtali. And the Levites shall declare to all men of Israel in a loud voice, Curse be the man who makes a carved or cast metal image, an abomination to the Lord, a thing made by, by the hands of the craftsmen, and sets it up in secret, and all the people shall answer and say, Amen. Cursed be any one who dishonors his father or his mother, and all the people shall say, Amen. Cursed be any one who moves his neighbor's landmark, and all the people shall say, Amen. Cursed be any one who misleads a blind man on the road, and all the people shall say, Amen. Cursed be any one who perverts the justice due to the sojourner, the fatherless, and the widow, and all the people shall say, Amen. Cursed be any one who lies with his father's wife, because he has uncovered his father's nakedness, and all the people shall say, Amen. Cursed be any one who lies with any kind of animal, and all the people shall say, Amen. Cursed be any one who lies with his sister, whether the daughter of his father or the daughter of his mother, 
and all the people shall say, Amen. Cursed be anyone who lies with his mother-in-law, and all the people shall say, Amen. Cursed be anyone who strikes down his neighbor in secret, and all the people shall say, Amen. Cursed be anyone who takes a bribe to shed innocent blood, and all the people shall say, Amen. And cursed be anyone who does not confirm the words of this law by doing them, and all the people shall say, Amen. All right. The New Testament this morning, we're in the Gospel of Matthew still. We're in chapter 17. We're going to go verses 14 through 27. So here we go. And when they came to the crowd, a man came up to him and, and kneeling before him said, Lord, have mercy on my son, for he is an epileptic and he suffers terribly, for he often falls into the fire and often into the water. And I brought him to your disciples, and they could not heal him. And Jesus answered, O oh, faithless and twisted generation, how long am I to be with you? How long am I to bear with you? Bring him here to me. And Jesus rebuked the demon, and it came out of him, and the boy was healed instantly. Then the disciples came to Jesus privately and said, Why could we not cast it out? And he said to them, Because of your little faith. For truly I say to you, if you have faith like a grain of mustard seed, you, would, you will say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move, and nothing will be impossible for you. And as they were gathering in Galilee, Jesus said to them, The Son of Man is about to be delivered into the hands of men, and they will kill him, and he will be raised on the third day. And they were greatly distressed. And when they came to Capernaum, the collectors of the two drachma tax went up to Peter and said, Does your teacher not pay the tax? And he said, Yes. And when he came into the house, Jesus spoke to him first, saying, What do you think, Simon? From whom do kings of the earth take toll or tax? From their sons or from others? And when he said, From others, Jesus said to him, Then the sons are free. However, not to give offense to them, go to the sea and cast a hook, and take the first fish that comes up, and when you open, and when you open its mouth, you will find a shekel. Take that and give it to them from from me and for yourself. And this is the word of the Lord. All right, let's take a look at the hymnody this morning. We walk by faith and not by sight. We walk by faith and not by sight. No, gra no gracious words we hear from him who spoke as none e'er spoke, but we believe him near. All right, let us pray. Almighty God, you stirred to compassion the hearts of your dear servants, Dorcas, Lydia, and Phoebe, to uphold and sustain your church by their devoted and chari charitable deeds. Give us the same will to love you, open our eyes to see you and the least ones, and strengthen our hands to serve you and others. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And uh, you heard in the prayer, it mentioned three people, uh, Dorcas, Lydia, and, uh, and Phoebe, uh, all women, and uh, I'd like to uh, read a little bit about that. Um, Dorcas, and it's in, in parentheses, is Tabitha, Lydia, and Phoebe. These women were exemplary Christians who demonstrated their faith by material support of the church. Dorcas, also known as Tabitha, was well known and much loved for her acts of charity in the city of Joppa, especially for making uh, clothes for the poor. When Dorcas died, suddenly, the members of her congregation sent to the neighboring city of Lydia for, for the apostle Peter, who came and raised her from the dead. Lydia, L L city of Lydda, sorry. Lydia was a woman in uh, Thyatira who worked at Philippi selling uh, famous purple dye that was much in demand in the ancient world. 
She was also a worshiper of God at the local synagogue. When the Apostle Paul encountered her in prayer among other uh, proselyte women, uh, his preaching of the word brought Lydia to, to faith in Christ. She and her friends thus became the nucleus of the Christian community at Philippi. Phoebe was another faithful woman associated with the Apostle Paul. She was a deaconess from uh, Centria, the port in Corinth, whom Paul sent to the church in Rome with his epistle to the Romans. Ah, nice. Oh, do, 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 do. Um, in it, he writes of her support for the work of the early church. Awesome. So that's the Phoebe that took the book of Romans. Isn't that something? All right. Well, I hope and pray that you all have just a fantastic day. It's going to be nice out. Uh, it's going to be a little warmer today in uh, southeast Texas. And hey, I just saw in the news, Louisiana, we're praying for you. Uh, I hope this thing doesn't come to you, but it looks like it's coming. Um, so anyway, uh, you're in our prayers. Uh, so with that, I'm going to go ahead and sign off for the day. So be safe, be happy, and be blessed. And we'll see you tomorrow on Coffee in the Word. Bye-bye. God bless.